This small device might look minimal, but it's packing one of the most advanced chips Intel has ever made. Inside is the Core Ultra 9288V, part of the Intel's new Lunar Lake architecture. You're getting 8 cores, 32GB of high-speed RAM and up to 48 tops of AI compute power, all in form factor smaller than most books. It even runs Cyberpunk at over 93 frames per second using just integrated graphics. So, what is the Asus NUC 14 Pro AI really capable of? Let's take a closer look. Out of the box, the Asus NUC 14 Pro AI makes a solid first impression. The build is compact, clean and surprisingly premium for its size. Alongside the unit, you get a mounting bracket useful if you want to attach it behind the monitor or under a desk and 120 watts power adapter. On the front panel, you will find the power button, 3.5mm audio jack, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, a Thunderbolt 4 port and a dedicated copilot AI button. Up top, there's a fingerprinter sensor for a quick login. Around the back, a 2.5GB Ethernet, another Thunderbolt 4 connector, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and the power input. What I appreciate here is the toolless design with a simple latch, you can open the case without screwdriver. Inside you will find the heatsink for the M.2 SSD and support for a single 2280 NVMe drive up to 4TB. There's no second drive slot and that's probably my only real complaint at this point. At the heart of this mini PC is the Intel Core Ultra 9. 288V part of Intel's new Lunar Lake series to line up. It's built on hybrid architecture with four performance cores that boost up to 5.1 GHz and four efficient cores running up to 3.7 GHz. In total, eight cores, eight threads. The integrated graphics are handled by Intel Arc 140V based on the latest XE2 architecture with eight XE cores and clock speeds up to 2500 MHz. You also get the Intel AI Boost, a dedicated NPU that delivers up to 48 tera operations per second of AI performance. Memory-wise, the system comes with 32GB of LPDDR5X running at 8533 mega transfers per second. This RAM is unfortunately not upgradable, it's soldered directly into the CPU or motherboard package, which helps with speed and efficiency but limits flexibility. This unit comes pre-installed with 1TB SSD and Windows 11 Pro out of the box, so it's ready to go from the start. Now, even though Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed, you'll still need to go through some setup. That includes signing in with the Microsoft account and going through a long series of updates and passes on long. At some point, the system may offer to skip updates and proceed with setup. I would recommend doing that, you can always update later. And yes. McAfee comes pre-installed. First thing I did, uninstalled it. Windows Defender handles security just absolute fine and honestly your best protection is just not clicking shade links. Stay smart and you will stay safe. Jumping into the BIOS things look familiar. If you have ever used an Intel NUC before, this layout will feel right to home. Asus didn't change much. Most options are basic, no overclocking, no advanced tuning. You do get three cooling profiles, Whisper standard and performance profiles. I run all my tests on performance mode where the chip boosts up to 35 watts and occasionally spikes to 40 watts. The fan curve is conservative, even under load it's surprisingly quiet, definitely not your average noisy mini PC. For thermal testing I run Cinepen Cherry 24 in 1 hour loop a realistic stress scenario. In that cycle the NUC averaged around 75 degrees Celsius, peaking at 80 at the hottest point, but also it was noisy. For a compact machine running at just 35 to 40 watts, that's a warm but totally acceptable. Once you're in Windows 11 everything just feels fast. Boot times are quick, apps open instantly and multitasking is smooth thanks to Core Ultra 9, 288V and 32GB of LPDDR5X memory. Whether you're browsing with 20 plus tabs, streaming 4K video or juggling documents and spreadsheets, the NUC 14 Pro doesn't stutter. Even light video editing is doable, especially if you stick to 1080p or 4K at 30 frames per second. In fact, we managed to edit a few YouTube shorts and some of our usual less demanding videos and it handled that workflow with ease. For office work, we used the free Microsoft Office 
FabSure that had no issue with any documents or spreadsheet task. We also tried a few lighter games and surprisingly, they run more than fine, especially at 1080p with medium settings. And because the RAM is integrated directly on the mobile package, latency is low and the whole system feels more responsive. You also get Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 out of box, so connectivity is future proof. Honestly, for daily task, this is one of the snappiest mini PC I have ever used. One of the coolest part of this new Lunar Lake chip is built in AI Boost MPU, delivering up to 48 tire operations per second of AI compute units. To test it out, we used Intel's AI Playground, a free, easy to use app that lets you generate images upscale photos or run local AI models. On first launch, it automatically downloads everything you need, including models like DeepSeq V2, OpenVINO and FY3.5. In tests with DeepSeq V2 using 1024 MAX tokens, the system delivered the response time reported to be around less than 5 seconds. That kind of speed for one device inference puts this mini PC in surprisingly capable category. The image generation feature also worked well, it created 4 full images in just few seconds using the integrated ARC 140V iGPU. While most of the workload still relies on iGPU, more AI apps are starting to tap into that MPU units, especially with Windows Copilot and upcoming AI features in apps like Paint and Photoshop. And here's the key part. By the end of this year, Microsoft is rolling out Copilot Plus, a next-gen version of Windows Copilot that will rely heavily on local NPU processing. That means this NAC is already equipped for features that haven't even launched yet. Moving on to GPU benchmarks and early impressions are promising. The ARC 140V iGPU shows noticeable gains over previous generation integrated graphics, especially in synthetic text like FreeDemark, Nitrate and Time Spy. Performance levels appear to be ahead of entry-level disk GPUs like Radeon RX 6400 and GTX 1650, which is quite impressive for integrated solution. On the CPU side, Cinebench R24 tests reveal an interesting split. Multi-thread performance lands just behind some of the larger mini PCs and high-end laptops, while single-thread performance ranks among the best in its class only slightly behind the most powerful Ryzen-based mini PCs. So depending on your workload, whether it's parallel rendering or day-to-day -day responsiveness, the chip delivers a balance of efficiency and speed. Now, let's talk about gaming, because you can actually game on this. Titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Black Myth, Wokong and even Cyberpunk 2077 are playable at 1080p with some reasonable adjustments to settings. While you won't be cracking everything to ultra, medium presets combined with smart upscaling like Intel's can deliver a surprisingly smooth experience. Lighter or stylized games like the fan favorite Turtle Wow, now running in Unreal Engine 5, feel fluid and responsive even on integrated graphics. Of course, this isn't meant to replace a full-blown gaming rig, but per a compact, low-power system, it's impressive how far this iGPU can go. And with Intel continuing to push out graphics driver updates, performance should only improve over time. And just to give you a practical frame of reference, this iGPU performs roughly on par with GTX 6050 or RX 6400. So if you can find the gameplay tests of your favorite title or either of those cards, that's about what you can expect here. The Asus NUC 14 Pro AI is one of those rare mini PCs that actually lives up to the AI in its name. Between the Core Ultra 9 288V, the ARC 140V iGPU and the dedicated AI Boost NPU, you're getting a lot of next-gen power in four factor that vanishes on your desk. Connectivity is excellent, though I personally miss having an SD card reader and rear-facing 3.5mm audio jack. Storage-wise, there's only one M.2 slot. If you plan to upgrade in the future, you will need to fully replace the drive. A second slot would have made a big difference. Most components are soldiered except the SSD and the Wi-Fi 7 module, which realistically most users will never replace. And yes, there's a dedicated copilot button on the front, but let's be honest, if you mount this on the VESA bracket, who's reaching around to press that? Those resources could have been used elsewhere. 
Also, there's no barebone version, which is a shame. It would have been great to build out a config that fits your exact needs. The fingerprint sensor is genuinely useful feature, fast, reliable, and great. If you ever forget your pin, I only wish the power button and fingerprint reader was combined into one. One on TIG, I ran into the NAC refused to connect to Elgato capture card, which made recording BIOS footage trickier than expected. I also don't see much point in testing eGPU performance over Thunderbolt 4 here. The processor just isn't strong enough in multi-core workloads to drive a high-end external GPU. And honestly, the built-in graphics are already among the best in the iGPU class. If you're considering switching to Linux or another OS, keeping in mind this unit includes a Windows license. If that's not useful to you, maybe look for a device where that cost isn't baked in. Then there's the price. The starting point for this model is around $1,250. And for that kind of money, I would personally expect a second N.2 slot, maybe a display port output, a few more USB ports, and honestly, I'm not a fan of non-upgradable soldier RAM, even if it's high-end quality and fast. One nice bonus is that you do get 3 months of Adobe Creative Cloud, which normally costs around 50 bucks per month, but let's be real, many of us on the student's plan, that's closer to $18. Still, it's a good value if you're just starting out. Strangely, this Adobe bundle didn't appear in my, my ASUS app, which could be because this is a sample unit, or maybe someone activated it before. If you don't see it in either, definitely contact ASUS support. These NACs are bought not just for the hardware, but also the ecosystem and, of course, support, which is where they beat out cheaper alternatives like billing or minis form. So, is this the perfect pin in the PC? No, but it's very well tough out, forward looking system with enough power for real creative work, light gaming and AI development. And finally, I'm not here to tell you what to think. Every time I try to draw a conclusion, someone's had the good reasons to disagree with me. So, based on everything you have seen here, you decide. And let me know in the comments what do you think about this system. And if anyone out there has a Mac Mini with M4 or M4 Pro chip, I would love to collaborate and run some side-by-side -side tests. Same goes for any B-Link or Mini's forum setups, even though they do not come with the kind of support ASUS offers here. Those comparisons could really help a lot of people on this channel. If you found this helpful, consider giving the video a like and hit that subscribe button if you want more deep dives like this. We have got plenty more harder on the way.